Welcome back to MedQuest Digest. I'm Niket Sanpal. I'm going to be presenting to you a case this week that comes from our USMLE Step 2 QBank. Don't forget, this information is available in our MedQuest QBank for Comlex and USMLE, as well as in our Master the Words flashcards available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble booksellers and everywhere else in the country. So let's get started. You have a 73-year-old male with a history of alcoholism, hepatitis C, who presents with lethargy and hypersomnia. Now, for those of you who are rotating or residents, hypersomnia sounds like a great idea right now because all of you are suffering from insomnia, hyposomnia, lack of somnia. Some of you are somnia right now, but you're still awake because you got to study, study, study. What they tell you, he's been sleeping all day and doesn't take any of his medications. Now, a person who has hep C and a history of alcoholism, you have to start worrying about cirrhosis and sleeping all day is not a great thing. On exam, the patient has ascites, palmar erythema, peripheral edema, and spider telangiectasias, all stigmata of cirrhosis. And they're just building the case for you, aren't they? Cirrhosis, cirrhosis, and sleeping all day. That's the take home from this vignette. On exam, oh Lord, look what's going on. There is a flapping tremor of his hands when they're dorsiflex. You tell the patient, hey, I want you to stand up and hold out your hands like you're stopping traffic. And now their hands start flapping like you see on screen there. That's asterixis. That's asterixis. It's a sign of a particular disorder. White counts normal, ammonia levels normal. The question is, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Asterixis, positive cirrhosis, hep C history, alcohol history, hypersomnolence, lethargy. These are all signs of hepatic encephalopathy. Hepatic encephalopathy, another sign of decompensation from liver cirrhosis. This patient is already a decompensated cirrhotic because they have ascites. Which of the following is the best initial therapy for this patient? Dialysis, fibrinolytics, lactulose, propanolol, insulin. Now, remember, a lot of these answers are going to be the ones on the US assembly or complex that they're all seeming like good answers. They want to know, do you know which is the bestest answer? And right now we're talking about hepatic encephalopathy. He's back. They always say he's back, not he as a person, but H-E, hepatic encephalopathy. The best initial therapy is with lactulose. Propanolol is what you use for somebody who has had a variceal bleed as secondary prevention. The next question is, which of the following is the best therapy to now reduce the recurrence of hepatic encephalopathy? So essentially what they're saying is you put the patient on lactulose, you give them enough lactulose to titrate to two to three bowel movements per day, but now they want to make sure it doesn't happen. Because lactulose is a great best initial treatment, but we want to reduce the recurrence and improve their quality of life, and the answer there is rifaximin. Rifaximin will help do that. Remember, a low protein diet is the wrong answer. It has been shown to actually worsen outcomes in patients who have cirrhosis. You actually want to give them a high protein diet. The original idea that all that nitrogenous waste from the proteins is going to cause problems actually was not correct. And so the review of this case is you have a person who has encep uh, encephalopathy from hepatic dysfunction. They have an underlying history of alcoholism, hepatitis C. There's a bunch of stigmata that proves it. Remember, Hepatic encephalopathy essentially occurs when toxins that are not cleared by the liver cross the blood-brain barrier and they can lead to an entire spectrum of neuropsychiatric disorders in the patient. Hypersomnolence, lethargy, anger, inappropriate outbursts, being tearful. Essentially, it can change the person completely. The best initial therapy is lactulose that reduces the toxin burden, causes the person to poop it out. And remember, that is perfect as the best initial therapy and it is really the most effective therapy up front. But then you want to reduce the recurrence, meaning relapse episodes, and you also want to improve their quality of life. Then you got to add on rifaximin. The two together do a pretty good job of treating people with hepatic encephalopathy. But again, as their disease worsens, it may not hold as tightly. Another point to remember is that neomycin is incorrect now. Rifaximin is superior because it does not have the side effects such as ototoxicity. You don't want to treat your cirrhotic patient and then make them deaf at the same time. And one important pearl to remember is that the ammonia levels do not correlate with the degree of hepatic encephalopathy and therefore on your US assembly and complex are always the wrong answer when asked what is the best diagnostic test. 
Thanks for joining me for this episode. I'll see you next time.